It is September 14th, and on September 14th, 1814, Francis Scott Key woke up in the early morning as the sun was rising to reveal the still flying flag over Fort McHenry. And that sight spurred him to begin writing a poem that is now well known to all Americans called The Star Spangled Banner. Now, you might have a vision in your head over what that banner looked like that morning, but it might surprise you to find out that it was somewhat different than the flag we see today. For example, it had only 15 stars. But also, you might not realize that unlike an American flag today, which has 13 stripes, the flag flying over Fort McHenry had 15 stripes. The history of the flag of the United States of America deserves to be remembered. There's a good chance that if asked who designed the first American flag, a person might answer Betsy Ross. That story, however, is likely incorrect, and the identity of the actual first flag designer or maker is unclear. It's not even clear how Betsy's legend really began. In 1870, Ross's grandson, William Canby, gave a speech to the Historical Society of Pennsylvania, in which he outlined the now familiar story. A committee from Congress arrived at Betsy's Philadelphia shop in the summer of 1776, consisting of Colonel George Ross, uncle to Betsy's deceased husband, Robert Morris, and George Washington himself, and hired Ross to produce a flag. According to Canby, Betsy altered the design given to her. Of the flag in the initial drawing, she said it was square, and that a flag should be one-third longer than its width, that the stars were scattered promiscuously over the field, and she said they should be in lines or in some adopted form, as a circle or a star, and that the stars were six-pointed in the drawing, and she said they should be five-pointed. The story is not without merit. We know Betsy made flags, including some for the military, and her family had close relations with Morris. We know Washington purchased goods from her, and that he was in Philadelphia at the time. However, there is no evidence that there was a committee to design or obtain a flag in 1776, and Washington himself could not have been a part of one in 1776, as he was not a member of the Continental Congress at the time. None of the three people on the committee mention anything about it. Finally, the 1782 seal, supposedly based on the original flag, used stars with six points, not five. And even if she did, there is no evidence of what it looked like, or that it was the traditional Betsy Ross flag with a circle of stars. In fact, the idea of a national flag so common today wasn't on the minds of 18th century leaders. Flags initially were used primarily, if not exclusively, as a military standard meant to identify units. They were not national in the sense that there was a single design that represented the state, but differed greatly and represented a single unit or a leader. Flying a flag to identify a country of origin began with the use of maritime flags, with possibly the oldest being the 17th century states flag of the Dutch Republic. It was as a maritime flag that the English flag took shape, from combining St. George's Cross of England with St. Andrew's Cross of Scotland in 1606 and combined with the Cross of St. Patrick in 1801. Continental forces first flew the so-called Grand Union flag, or Continental Colors, during the Revolution. It was first flown in December 1775 by John Paul Jones on the Alfred, the largest ship in the small American squadron. The naval ensign was necessary to identify ships at sea, it's not certain who produced it, but it may have been Margaret Manny who charged the Alfred for the creation of an ensign around the same time. The Grand Union flag had 13 stripes to represent the 13 colonies, but had the British Union Jack in its canton. American ships also briefly flew the Green Tree flag, a white flag with a green tree at its center and the line, An Appeal to Heaven. The use of stripes in the American flag may have its origins in the flag of the Sons of Liberty. There were two flags associated with them, one with nine vertical stripes, four white and five red, and another largely used by American merchantmen with 13 horizontal stripes. A 13-striped Grand Union flag was raised on January 1, 1776, at Washington's orders in Cambridge, Massachusetts. The Grand Union flag ironically happened to be identical to a 1701 flag flown by the East India Company. Stripes on early flags and regimental flags were not always red and white. Some were yellow and black, silver and blue, blue and red, and some were even green. Interestingly, images depicting a naval flag with red, white, and blue stripes exist, apparently stemming from an unclear message by Arthur Lee, one of the American commissioners in France. In 1778, he wrote that a ship's colors should be white, red, and blue, alternately to 13, and in the upper angle next to the staff, a blue field with 13 stars. The stars similarly have myths about them. The American five-pointed star was understood in European heraldry to be the five-pointed rowel of a knight's spur, even sometimes including a hole in the center, while stars had at least six points. 
George Washington's coat of arms contained the rowels, but there is no certain evidence that this influenced the design of the national flag. Evidence for the circular design is scarce. One contemporary version remains in the background of a painting of Washington. It wasn't until 1777 that there is any documentation that Congress addressed the issue of a flag, and likely they were concerned primarily with its use aboard ships. The decision is sandwiched between decisions of the Marine Committee. The resolution itself is simple. Resolved that the flag of the 13 United States be 13 stripes, alternate red and white, that the Union be 13 stars, white in a blue field representing a new constellation. Eleven days earlier, a Native American nation had requested an American flag and sent payment of wampum, which possibly prompted the resolution. Likely, Congress had been considering the issue already. A committee to design a seal, which included Benjamin Franklin, John Adams, and Thomas Jefferson, may also have considered a flag. There are, however, no surviving records of how the flag was designed. Francis Hopkinson, an artist and designer, did request payment from Congress for the design of a flag, but Congress refused, as he had not been the only one to work on the project. Hopkinson called the flag the Great Naval Flag of the United States. The 1777 resolution did not state how the stars were to be arranged and various designs proliferated. Pierre L'Enfant, a designer of the city of Washington, designed one in an oval, while many had the stars in rows of 454 stars, or 32323. By 1795, debate raged over what to do with the flag. Vermont and Kentucky had been admitted to the Union and both wished for representation. Including them was a matter of significant debate. Some called the debate a consummate piece of frivolity, while others argued that the new states should not be offended, and that adding to the flag would serve as a reminder to the world that the country was growing. Many, however, were aghast at the cost, with one member claiming that it would cost the government $60 for every ship to get a new flag. If we alter the flag, argued another, we may go adding and altering at this rate for a hundred years to come. It is very likely before 15 years elapse we shall consist of 20 states. The flag ought to be permanent. Despite the debate, Congress voted that the flag be changed. From and after the first day of May, Anno Domini 1795, read the act, the flag of the United States be 15 stripes with alternate red and white, that the Union be 15 stars, white in a blue field. The most obvious consequence of the 1795 Act was the implication that each new state added both a stripe and a star to the flag, although no further alterations were authorized. That's why Francis Scott Key saw a 15-star, 15-stripe flag over Fort McHenry, though there were 18 states in the Union. The idea predated 1814. A story endures that during the Revolution, a captured American privateer captured by the British flew a flag with only 12 stripes. And when pressed, he claimed that since the British had taken New York, Congress had a province less, and that it was Congress's orders to cut off a stripe so there should be no more stripes than provinces. Handmade flags, though unofficial, could include further stars. The 1799 Revenue Cutter's flag was designed to have the arms of the United States, an eagle with a shield displayed in dark blue on a white canton. The final Flag Act, enacted on April 4, 1818, finally brought about the system we know now. That from and after the 4th of July next, the flag of the United States be 13 horizontal stripes, alternate red and white. That the Union be 20 stars, white in a blue field. It added that a new star be added for each new state, but the star was not officially added until the 4th day of July next, succeeding such admission. The design was left to Captain Samuel C. Reed, a naval hero of the War of 1812. It was him who suggested returning to 13 stripes, that it was obvious that continually adding stripes would become unwieldy. He also suggested that the flag on land have its stars formed into a larger star, the so-called Great Luminary. Naval flags were to have their stars in rows. It was a flag with a great luminary that first flew on April 13, 1818, which was hoisted over the Capitol. The luminary was popular from 1818 to around the 1860s. Still, in 1818, there were no strict definitions of how to arrange the stars. In 1857, Admiral George Preble described flags in the harbor. The majority had the stars in five horizontal rows of six stars each. Most of the foreign vessels had them strewn over the Union. Some had one larger star formed of 13 smaller stars. Others had them in a lozenge, a diamond, or a circle. Others were even more creative, with them shaped in anchors or the letters U.S. 
It was a desire for standardization in the Navy and the advent of mass production, which would lead to the firm uniformity of later designs. But many continued to hand design flags with different patterns. Throughout the 19th century, a plethora of regimental flag designs were made to reflect the national flag in creative ways. The Civil War and the years preceding it saw a number of unofficial flags designs that held only the stars of either the Union or the Confederacy, or states that allowed slavery versus ones that didn't. This included a flag in Charleston flown in 1856, which correctly defined the future Confederacy's 15 states, and possibly the 1860 Hayes Arctic Expedition flag, which had only 18 stars. Samuel Morris suggested a shared flag with the Canton diagonally split, with one side holding stars from the north and the other side the south. Due to the 1818 Act, the country dutifully altered its design as new flags entered the Union. However, they did so so quickly that some states did not get a flag with only their own star added. 1818 had the 20-star flag, 1819 the 21, and 1820 saw the addition of Maine and Alabama. The 24-star flag lasted from 1822, after the admittance of Missouri, to 1836, when Arkansas was added. It was replaced the next year with the addition of Michigan. Between 1837 and 1890, the flag added one star at a time as states were added, but five states were admitted in 1889, leading to the 43-star 1890 version. 44, 45, and 46-star flags were produced between 1892 and 1912. From 1912 to 1958, there was only the 48-star flag, representing the contiguous United States. Alaska became a state on January 3, 1859, and a 49-star flag was instituted that July. Hawaii followed in August, leading to the 1960 design, which remains today. The flag has also gone by a variety of names. It was possibly the Marquis de Lafayette who first called it the Stars and Stripes, as Americans were more likely to call it the Stripes and Stars in the early years. It was Captain Stephen Driver of Massachusetts who is credited for dubbing his own 24-star flag Old Glory. The 20th century had seen a flurry of new flag rules as well, such as the 1942 Flag Code, which instituted rules written by the National Flag Conference, held in 1923, and has been adjusted several times since. It has also seen the standardization of the design and production, first laid out in 1912 for the 48-star flag in executive orders by President Taft, which laid out the configuration of the stars and the width of the stripes. The exact colors, today called Old Glory Red, Old Glory Blue, and White, were not standardized until 1934. Since then, rules have governed its appearance. It has been more than 245 years since the Flag Act of 1777, the first act of Congress to offer a design for the flag that would become the flag of the United States of America. And the flag has changed since, and of course might change again. There's still a chance that we might add more states, and therefore more stars. In fact, that flag's already probably been designed. Mary Rebke of Annan Flagmakers told the website Marketplace in 2017 that Congress essentially starts designing the new flag as soon as the old one is made. So the star pattern for the 51-star flag has probably been known since the late 1950s. The flag that inspired Francis Scott Key 208 years ago today might have changed with time, but it still includes the same basic elements those broad stripes, and bright stars. So, gallantly streaming. I hope you enjoyed this episode of The History Guy. Check out our community on thehistoryguyguild.locals.com, our webpage at thehistoryguy.com, and our merchandise at teespring.com, or book a special message from The History Guy on Cameo. And if you'd like more episodes on forgotten history, all you have to do is subscribe.